I'm Melissa Dev. I teach grades seven and eight uh, currently at Rosedale, and I have taught that for the last 22 years in Sarnia. My background is in art education. I am not an expert on artificial intelligence, despite whatever Don told you. Um, however, I am pursuing my master's in educational technology, and a few years ago, I decided to really immerse myself in using technology in the classroom because that's the way we were going with students. So I played around with it a fair amount. A lot of people are very worried about education um, and artificial intelligence, as well as artificial intelligence in all other walks of life. And I will agree that there are a lot of concerns, but there are a lot of advantages as well. And in the end, after all the reading and the studying that I've done, I've concluded that we're going to go forward with it anyway. So I should get on board and figure out how to use it with the students. So this is a link to a recent video that was created by the guy who started Khan Academy about how artificial intelligence can create, can save education. Um, but I didn't want you to have to listen to a seven minute TED talk. So I asked AI to actually shorten it to, I think, about 50 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Theo, am I sharing the right screen or not? Okay. The thesis has been students are going to be using chat GPT and other forms of AI to cheat, do their assignments. But I think AI for probably the biggest trans positive transformation that education has ever seen. That if you were to give personal one-to-one -to -one tu tutoring for students, that you can actually get a distribution that looks like that right. But what's new is a little, little bot thing at the right. And we'll start by seeing one of the very important safeguards, which is the conversation is recorded and viewable by your teacher and talk to like the Mississippi River. It brings things to life in ways that, you would, that really were science fiction even six months or, or a year ago. That's one thing I, way I use AI in the classroom a lot is I use it to preview videos for me, to shorten videos when necessary. Um, to go through the videos and make sure there aren't any inappropriate languages. It used to take me hours upon hours to preview all the videos and get to the exact right clip, but now with AI I can do it easily. Um, all right, so what is AI? Well, this is the part that you may find interesting or you may find boring depending upon who you are, but I didn't feel it was right to actually give a talk on AI without explaining it a little tiny bit. So AI is artificial intelligence. It's basically using computers to show how smart they are to give them tasks that they are able to perform. And AI has been around for a very long time. It actually started in the 1950s with Alan Turing when he decided to propose that perhaps machines could think. The term was coined in 1956 at the first conference. Um, AI continued its development until about a 1980 when everybody got terrified and there was sort of like a complete lull and no development whatsoever. And the reason right now that AI is so, so prominent is basically because we have the computing power. Like you can look that I carry a computer in my pocket most times that is more powerful than the one that sent men to the moon for the first time, as well as it's now readily accessible. So it's no longer cost a fortune to do it, and anybody can log on and do it at any time if they have access to technology. So this is the history of AI, really, really simplified. We've got neural networks started in the 1950s to 70, 1980 to 2010, we did machine learning, and we are currently in what is known as deep learning. I already explained why. These are examples of how you use AI already. You might use it when you're planning a route, it will predict it for you. When you are saying, can I say, hey Siri and hey Google without it going off? Um, hey Siri, hey Google, hey Alexa, that's using AI. Grammarly has done massive updates, that's using AI as well. Here are the different kinds of AI. Let me know if I'm going too fast, but I also don't want to skip all the stages, okay? So the very first one that you would know about is the deep blue. It's a reactive machine that was used in 1990 to beat the chess champion. This is a limited memory AI. It reacts, and you'll see this in chatbots. There's lots and lots of chatbots out there. There is a theory of mind AI, and this is AI that is still currently in development but does exist, and AI that will react to your emotions and react to you as a human being, and this is the one that everybody is absolutely terrified of. 
This is the next step in AI development that doesn't actually exist yet, although they are developing it. And this is self-aware AI. This is AI that would have emotions, would have feelings, and would be more intelligent than a human being. These are the core concepts of AI. We have machine learning. Um, that's, it does predictions for you. So if Netflix offers you a suggestion, if Spotify, if Amazon says, hey, I noticed you bought a lot of this, would you like to buy this? That's machine learning AI. I'm gonna demo some of that today as well. This is a neural network. This is a very, very simplified brain um, that can recognize things. So Google Photos does that. I don't know if you know, but if you open your Google Photos and type in beach, it'll pull up every picture of beach that you have. Or if you type in dog, it'll pull up every picture of dog. And if you'd allowed it, it'll type in, you can type in, you know, mom, and it'll pull up every picture of your mother. There's natural processing. So natural language processing, that happens with Hey Siri. When you talk to Siri and Siri responds to your voice. And in Gmail, you'll notice now that it has primary social and promotions. So it reads through and decides what it is. And that's natural language processing AI. Robotics isn't necessarily AI, but it often will contain an element of AI. So it will learn how to do a task and then improve upon that learning. And you can see this in the Rumba, which I bought for my parents not that long ago. And they absolutely love because now my dad doesn't have to do the vacuuming anymore. And then expert systems. So this is very similar to what they did with Deep Blue. So this is AI that's very specific. They fill it with information only about that topic. And it's used a lot in medicine. So it could, they, you can feed it. What are the symptoms? It goes through all the history of all the diseases, right? what exactly is your background, you know, and then it will help the doctor diagnose. It won't diagnose you yet, but it will help the doctor make a diagnosis faster. Computer vision um, is AI that recognizes facial features, and this is all over the place now. Um, they're developing it. I met a guy at Microsoft who showed me his plan for, for shoppers when you're in stores. They'll watch your face to see how you react to products. And I couldn't come to a church and not discuss this. So there, there's bias mitigation. So AI only knows what it's been told. So if it has been programmed by a certain amount of information, this is a great example. So this is Google Art Selfie. They've inputted all kinds of famous paintings into a database. You take a picture of yourself, and it matches your face to the painting. But what they discovered is the majority of paintings are Eurocentric, like white paintings. So as a result, it works very well if you happen to be white, but it has a bias if you don't. They're also using AI now to scan through resumes, which is a huge issue, depending upon how you, you've made your resume and you built it. So as a result, you have to be transparent about use of AI. People are like, I used AI to build this presentation, to draft it out, to form parts of it. When I was doing last semester's course, I used AI all the time with my top whole submission and was very transparent in the use of it. So it's very important to say if I'm picking a job candidate from AI, you have to say that's what it is. And if it screws up, you have to hold it accountable. So both Microsoft and Google have said they're committed to this. We'll find out whether it's true or not. But here's an example of lawyers who used uh, ChatGPT to cite case law that didn't exist because ChatGPT doesn't necessarily give you the correct information. Now, they weren't disbarred, but they were fined and they were fired for this. So if you are chosen for a job and you think, or not chosen, and you think AI is involved, then the accountability would be you get to sit down with an actual person and review it. And here's another big one. So if you are using any apps, any websites, anything that is free, it's not free. They're mining data from you which is fine if that's what you want. Um, and most of the time, I am totally open to that because I don't have a lot of things that I have to keep secret. I'm a school teacher, I have to be very careful what I do. Um, 
but they have to be transparent about privacy. Don's looking at his watch, so I have to go faster. All right, so Google, so it's whenever you click the I accept, you're giving consent to privacy, right? You're giving up a certain amount of information. All right, now's the fun stuff. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of those things before I continue? Yes. Like, when you, when you go in, you can see like, what yep. Um, you said to make them look smarter, but that's kind of like a goal, like to make the robot look smarter, like. That, right with the Spotify playlists, etc. And then the next step after that would be um, a robot to help give you the answers that you need. It's the place of the husband. Well, so that might I would argue that like people are saying I accept the consent. And and I I would argue from the people's perspective that going to need to do that. For example, soccer teams, when they first started with their written word, said that it was going to ruin intelligence and thinking. That the only way you could be intelligent was to have a system of the way things worked out. So you calculated the percentage of that. They said math will be first, then it was math, right? So AI is the next step in what's happening with technology. And it doesn't need to be terrifying as long as they keep track of, okay, here are the parameters, this is what's okay, and this is what's not okay. And if you're not okay sharing your location at all times with Google, you can turn it off, right? I am because that's how I can get back to my wife. So I can search a place and then find it, right? All right, here's your demo. So this one is a neural network. It uses machine learning and a neural network. I'm going to move out of here and switch into a different account. And this is the part where I would sort of like somebody to play. Anybody want to play? Oh, yes. Okay. You have to draw something. So what they did was they inputted all these drawings into the neural network. And then they asked if it could identify the drawings. And once they got millions upon millions of people, so you're going to have 20 seconds to gauge well. Okay. It does not matter how bad it is. Okay. We know that it's going to be bad because we're using a nose pad. Okay. So know that ahead of time. So no, right? Um, but it's going to recognize what you draw or not. Okay? Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. When you are ready, you just hit draw it. Do I have to push and hold to draw no, or it's no, just... It's just I see circle, or brain. Oh, I know, it's lollipop. Yeah, keep going, keep going. I see skyscraper. Oh, I know, it's cactus. You're too good. I see two. Oh, I know, it's peanut. Okay, stay on the monitor, please. Okay. Thank you. I see square. I see suitcase or candle. Oh, I know. It's hot tub. <laughs> Draw a flower, please. I see lime or lollipop or flower. I'm stumped. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. Sorry, sit, go. I see heart. 
Now try to make it a mountain. I see underwear. Or triangle. Or lock. Or comet. I see swimming pool. Or sleeping bag. Or pyramid. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. And, and I will tell you that I've been with those students <laughs> many times, and those, you know, grade seven boys, <laughs> it doesn't identify those things. All right, so if you look at one, the lollipop, you can see why it saw it as a lollipop. These are all of the different ones that looked like lollipops. And if we look at one where you had to deliberately fail because you're too good, you can see why it saw it as a flower, obviously, right? But that's what it was looking for, was anything similar to that to say that it was glasses. All right, the next one I want to do is this one. Um, and I apologize in advance for the amount of music AI that I put in there. Keep in mind, my background is in art education, and I also, at some point, have been a music teacher. So this is a Google Doodle. Are you familiar with this one? I'm sorry? Do you know this Google Doodle at all? No. So this is, um, this is Bach, okay? Let me move some. <laughs> He's the 18th century composer, known for being one of, considered one of the best composers of all time. So I'm going to create some music with Bach. And as I said, I'm not a musician, but I Okay. So this is the music I've just created. Not like wonderful or anything, but watch what happens when I harmonize with the. Looks at what I've written and it decides what would work best to harmonize based upon his music. All right, that wasn't that wonderful. Usually it sounds slightly better, but you get the idea. All right, I was, oh yeah, I wanted to show you the surgical training. So another thing that I have a huge interest in is virtual reality um, because you can take students to places that I can't afford to take them. So I can take them to the reserves up north that don't have clean water and they can literally look around the reserves, right? Well, virtual reality and AI have started to do some really interesting things together. So. Justice, could you explain it to me as if you were Atticus Finch? 
or could you explain to me what game you think the meaning of happiness is in uh, The Great Gatsby? So you do have to think. The issue is ChatGPT is not always going to give you accurate answers. You have to be a better critical thinker. But it gives you a place where you can have a discourse back and forth and they don't, it doesn't get bored with you because it's a machine, <laughs> right? So what about this? And what about this? And do you think that, and is there any information, right? And then, so when you're using it for academic purposes, you absolutely have to go back and double check all of your things. But I argue that it can actually expand your creativity. So I played with pictures. Um, I asked it to create um, a painting of Sarnia because I wanted it to be very specific. I didn't want it to be something that it would easily be able to do in the style of Caravaggio. And then it occurred to me that not a lot of everybody would know who Caravaggio was, so I went with Van Gogh. <laughs> Monet, interestingly enough, gave me this error because there are copyright issues as well. There are many, many uh, writers whose work has been imported into ChatGPT without their consent. So for whatever reason, it won't do Monet. And usually when I do this stuff, I always go, you know, over 100 years ago because you're safer with copyright. Um, Renoir, Da Vinci, Dali. And then, keep in mind, this is last night and it's 11 o'clock and I'm still playing. And I thought, okay, can you write me a song in the style of Elton John about a long, lazy Sunday in Canaterra Park? Because that's very specific. So it did. And then I said, okay, can you give me guitar chords? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not playing the guitar in front of people because I'm not that great. So I said, give me piano. And then I asked a friend who I knew is a late night. So <clears throat> this is Jim Clayton. I don't know if any of you know who he is. He's an award-winning jazz musician. He's from Sarnia and he's a good friend, very good friend, because I can call him at 1120 and say, hey, Jim, here's this fake song that AI wrote. Can you play it? And he did. So, oh, I generated paintings in William Turner style of, of Sarnia for you to enjoy while you do the song. So in the style of Elton John. Oh, Jim also said I had to tell you that this can't ever end up anywhere public because he's ashamed of it. He only had 20 minutes to work on it, but also to tell you that he is hireable for gigs. Okay. Beneath the blue of Sarnia sky, where Lake Huron's waves whisper high, I find a spot where the grass is side, in Canaterra where peace lies nigh. A lazy Sunday, take me away to where the children laugh and play, in Canaterra we'll dream today on a lazy, breezy, sun-kissed way. The animal farm's a gentle sound With nature's chorus all around The bunnies hop on sacred ground And in this park where love is found A lazy Sunday with skies so great You turn the simplest walk into a ballet In Canaterra we'll mold the clay Of memories that forever stay As the sun dips low, I'm engulfed in the sunset's glow. The water sparkles with a soft show, whispering secrets only it knows. The train tracks lead to places unseen, through the tunnel of trees, a living screen. Here time passes in a world serene, in Canaterra life's not routine. Sunday, don't ever stray. Keep me in this moment, I pray. In Canaterra, let's forever stay on a lazy, gentle, endless day. In Canaterra, where the heart plays on a long, lazy, Elton style Sunday.
let me give you, so again, Jim is not proud of that song in any way, shape or form, but he does understand that if you are completely stuck for inspiration, Chat GPT is a great way to start. So and as for replacing your husband, let's see what we can do. So, so what are your interests? Somebody give me something. Hobby? Justice. Justice. Okay, that one's hard because remember, it's only going to do exactly what it says. So, so we, well, um, give me a brief history of curling in point form. There you go. So you can continue to refine and refine and refine, and that's what GPT chat does very well. Um, I would use it to write an email. For example, I had a student who was on their phone constantly while I was teaching, and I needed to write an email to the parent, but I needed to not sound not nice. <laughs> so I put in what I would like to have said, and then I said, make this sound more polite. And it wrote a beautiful email. <laughs> that didn't come off like I was really not a nice person. Um, write a recipe. Yes, of course. The nice one. And I got a lovely response back saying we will support you in all ways. It's okay. Yes, my parents know that very well. Um, no, not always. No, there's a lot of people who are using artificial intelligence without citing it. But at the same time, you've been doing it for a long time. When you drive to somebody's house, you don't tell them that you used AI to find it. When you create a PowerPoint where you're pulling pictures, you don't tell them that you search them off the internet using AI. So where it becomes really important is if I want to profit, if I want to publish, or if I want to share publicly. That's where it becomes very, or if I want to say, I wrote this history of curling children's book without citing that I was assisted by. But a lot of people over the pandemic wrote like children's books that they had AI do and then publish them and didn't give. So the question is like, who gets the royalties? <laughs> so Nick Cave, who is a, a musician, would argue that nothing that AI does is ever going to equal human emotion. If you ask it to write a song, and as an artist, like I'm gonna agree, but at the same time, I can do things like, you begin to question yourself, right? So here's a whole bunch of fun stuff you can do, including if you wanna see how much you sing like Freddie Mercury. It actually listens to you and then we'll, we'll grade you. That's super fun. I think I made you do that, didn't I? I didn't, I should've. All right, so this person does not exist. These are all generated by AI. And if I put up a screen share of somebody who exists and somebody who doesn't, some people are very quick at being able to figure out which ones are generated by AI, and some people not so much. No, no, this definitely isn't. This is definitely AI. They don't actually exist. They've just taken features from a bunch of different people and blended them together. I can also, for fun, take my face and easily put it on, you know, any celebrity. Or you can predict what your child might look like. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can predict what my child might look like. I use AI, I scan the students' photos. You know how they get their picture taken every year and we put it in their OSR. I scan their photos from kindergarten all the way to grade eight and then I throw it into AI and then you watch them grow. And it's super fun. So if you can think of something, you can probably do it with AI. 
Um, can I write gluten-free recipes? Absolutely. Can I ask when's the best time to plant this particular kind of rose? Absolutely. But it's only going to use the information that it has. So when you're asking it life and death questions, like what's the meaning of life, or to diagnose a disease, I would be very cautious. You need to understand. So, which I think it's important because it lets kids think about stuff, but it forces them to be critical thinkers. They can't believe anything. And that is where I find most students are struggling these days. Because information was so readily available to them, they just took whatever they were given and said, oh, it must be true. Well, now they have to question. Well, it's how we would question the winners rewrite history or whatever that phrase is. No, the white old men write history. <laughs> That's it. Any other questions? You're in the browser search Google. Yep. You're in, in Google. How effective is that? And also, if does there be an, an, an incognito kind of trick or to yes and no? Could you please oh, repeat the question? So, so when you're in a Google browser, you can log in under your own account, or you can log in under incognito, which means that you're supposed to be completely private. Um, I would argue that some information is still being collected, it's just not being stored. Um, you need to know how to do a search properly. But if I, so let me show you an example in chat GPT. I'm going to, oh, if I'm doing a search, would it be as effective in incognito? If you worded it exactly the same and you were using the exact same search engine, because there's lots of different search engines, it's going to give you very similar results, but it's not going to give you the exact results. Because every time you search for something, you are part of an algorithm and it knows who you are. So it predicts what it is you want. So if I searched climate change, it is going to give me very different answers than somebody who doesn't believe in climate change does the same search. Does that make sense? Now incognito will delete that information and maybe give you something slightly less biased, but it's still gonna collect some information. So there is paid AI and then there's unpaid. And there's differences in what that looks like as well. Any other questions? Because I'm, yeah, you're standing up. I'm going now. <laughs> Would you mind just being at the end of the service? Is there any questions? Oh, no. <laughs>